Hello everyone. My name is Alicia. I'm a multimillionaire as I got a big share in real estate. I never expected to have this huge amount. My whole life was changed in the blink of my eyes. Can you guess how I make that money? It's an interesting story and I'm going to share it with you guys. So stay with me and learn how fate or something like a magic works to change your life. I live in the Hamptons with my grandmother. I really miss my mom who died last year. The Hamptons is the place where I was born, but neither my mom nor my grandmother wanted to live here. So they decided to move to New Jersey. The reason behind their decision remained unknown to me for years. And who knew that very reason was going to give me millions of dollars in the future. I spent most of my childhood time with my grandmother because my mom got really hard stuff to deal with. Her hectic routine didn't make her available to deal with me much. She was a lawyer and practiced criminal law, which I never liked, as it often scared me. I was afraid to travel with her as it seemed to me that someone was following us or things like that. You may say I was a chicken-hearted person, but what can you expect from me? who didn't have a father and whose life was just confined to these two people majorly. I remember one night, while we were sleeping peacefully, her phone rang. I was in the warmth of her hug. She unwrapped her arms and peeked at the screen. By now, I was awoken. My eyes darted towards the wall clock, and I asked hesitantly, who is calling mom? Her face showed that she was not pleased with that call. Before she could decline it or do something else, the call ended but it was not going to end there. The person on the other side wanted tomorrow our night. She placed the phone back on the side table and we tried to sleep again. She must have noticed that I wasn't comfortable at all. She started sharing a pleasant story of her childhood and soon my eyes were closed. I could hardly sleep for an hour. The phone started noising again. Mom picked a call. I tried to understand what it was all about but mommy patted me softly and made me sleep again. It wasn't the only horrific event that I faced. On another night, when we returned home after having some Italian meal, the dinner was more than awesome but my stomach wasn't going to digest it as the night filled me with fear. That very night, someone shot a rifle on the main gate. My grandmother and I were totally out of our minds. We felt as if our brains were working no more. My mom tried to calm us down and made a call to the police station. Soon my ears were hearing the sound of a siren. The policemen took some samples and made their way out of the scene. I must confess that I didn't sleep that night. It was all torturing me. I wasn't able to focus on my studies. My school teacher called my mother and told her about my poor condition. She let her know how I was behaving in class. My unconsciousness was winning over me. I believed it was one of the best ideas that my mother's brain got. She arranged extra music classes for me. Now, I had to attend music classes to calm my body down after school. I was really enjoying it. Instead, it was a sort of mediation for me. But you all know peace isn't meant to stay forever. It's life, and we have to face hardship at every edge or the corner. Before I could start college, my mother died in a car crash. The investigation tried to present that it was an accident, but something deep in my heart kicked badly. I had a hunch that it wasn't a normal accident, someone had planned it. Whatever it was, my brain wasn't going to comprehend it for at least a couple of weeks, maybe month or year, I thought. One day while I was sitting near the window and my eyes were glued to the busy street, my grandmother told me, Dear, I think we will move back to the Hampton. It was unusual for me because neither my mother nor she had ever desired it. But why? Maybe we should be near our relatives. But I made friends here and I don't want to lose them. I had a very concise social circle, but it was counted with loyal ones. Grandmother sat beside me and tried to convince me it was your mother's wish to talk to you, father. Father, are you for real? I took a short pause and then continued, but she never talked about it, even avoided it. She wasn't sure whether he would accept you or not. I cleared my throat. I don't meet him. I never saw him either. My grandmother interrupted me. It was your mother's last wish. 
and she talked rationally about it. I got you, Grandma. She looked at her dangling hands. Do you really think I'm going to leave with you, even for next ten years, or maybe five or two perhaps? Her words sounded rude to me and filled my eyes with tears. I rolled my hand across her body. That hug told me that she was really concerned about me. Her notion was critical, but I didn't want to see my dad. He left my mom when she got pregnant. If he really loved her then, why didn't he support her? My mind was dwelling with like tons of questions, but I ignored all of them for the sake of my grandma. Okay, as you please. Next day we were on the way to the Hamptons. As you know, I never saw my dad neither I wanted to, but I was just curious how he looked. Like, I got eyes like he had? Did my nose have any resemblance with his one? We shifted to the old house of my grandmother where she had started her life with my grandfather. It was the house where my mom had spent her childhood. I spent the whole day in her room. I read her diary. What a lovely soul she was. My grandmother knew my father's name and his address. She was ready to leave, but before she could do so, she received a call from the hospital. It was about me. I was hit by a car. My injury wasn't severe, but the man had lost control of his car and boom, the car crashed. He died before he could reach the hospital. I was lucky to survive. Three days later, I was home. Next day, she visited his mansion and learned that he had died. She was expecting that he could have transferred the money and assets to his new wife and children. But to her surprise, he didn't marry. We didn't know how to prove that I was her only child. Before we could manage to come up with an idea, my cell phone rang. It was the hospital. They wanted me to visit it. To my shock, the person who died in the car accident was my father. The state police were investigating the whole case and tested my blood sample too. The DNA confirmed that he was my dad. Now, I felt sorry because I had learned that he loved my mother, and that was the reason he never married. He might have tried to approach my mom, but she had closed every possible way. An accident had changed my life. Now, his shares are mine. I miss both of them, and I have started a charity work under my mom and dad's name. I believe they would be happy and united where they are. I need to go now as I have a meeting regarding charity funds.